What's up? Hey, what's going on, Clifford, How's man? Going, man? I can't believe I'm talking to you, man. <laughs> nah, man, I can't believe I'm talking to you, man. What's up? <laughs> Appreciate the love. Uh, welcome to Heavy Brand Podcast. Um, it's a brand new podcast. I'm based out in the Detroit area. Um, so Clifford, for uh, for all our viewers and listeners, just um, give like a, a brief intro, your background. My background. All right. So um, I'm a Ghanaian American comedian, entertainer. I don't, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, been doing funny videos for a while, right? So um, I just have this passion just to make people happy. Positive energy only, clean comedy. Um, you know, I thrive in making comedy that anybody and everybody can, can watch, right? So um, that's my background, right? So I don't know. People call me a comedian. Some people call me entertainer. I, I just call myself Cliff, right? Yeah, you're, I see you're, you're, you're versatile. Um, now, the question I'm about to ask you next, because... I knew I knew a young man back in the day in Detroit. He was a basketball player. I knew him when he played high school ball, I knew him when he played college ball. He didn't have a funny bone in his body as far as I knew. He was a real serious guy, tall, about six four, six five. His name is Kevin Tate. He ended up becoming uh, a professional comedian. I think he's out in the LA area. I hear that a lot of comedians are not really uh, funny, like, like in their personal lives and at home, are you always funny or are you like dead serious at home? Um, see, that's, I think my, my personality is just, I'm a very outgoing person. Um, ever since I was a kid, I, I've always been a class clown. I play around a lot and I used to get in trouble by, you know, my parents for that. Um, it's not me personally. I don't think I'm funny. Right. But I think a lot of comedians don't even think they're funny, but we, we end up being labeled as funny. Um, you know, like when I do these skits, my, my main objective is not to be funny. You know, my, you know I'm, trying to, I'm trying to teach a lesson through, you know, through like life experiences. You know, the drama that I add to is what makes it funny because without anything, that's, if it's not entertaining, nobody's going to watch it, right? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm generally, I, I'll say... Yeah, I'm just an outgoing person, but at the same time, I could be very shy, right? That's another part of a comedy that really? people don't realize. See, people don't realize. A lot of comedians, you know, we're not always on, right? That's why we hate when somebody says, okay, oh, you're a comedian. Tell us a joke, because that's, that's not how we work, right? It's like, you know, it's like a, a profession. Um, and then you have your personal life. And personally, I'm very, very quiet. So I get what uh, you're saying. I'd have never known that now. Were you born uh, in the States, in the UK, like a lot of Ghanaians, or were you uh, born in Ghana? Yeah, yeah, I was born in Ghana. I was born in Ghana. Um, I came here when I was four or five. Um, I've been in New York ever since. Okay, because I, I was born in Ghana, but I was like five years old when my family moved, moved to the States, too. So, I, I'm, you know, Ghanaian American, we all have, because yep. Ghanaian Americans, some were born in overseas, UK. Ghana, it, even the Netherlands, you know. Yep, yep, yep. We're, all, we're all over the place, man. That's a fact. Now, do you, uh, do you work out regularly? Because you're not built like the typical comedian. No disrespect to some of the comedians, <laughs> just comedians on TV and the movies, but you tend to be more cut up. Yeah, yeah, I, I do actually, um, I do work out almost every day. Sunday is like my one day that I don't work out. And, um... It's not even just that. I'm, I'm very big on wellness, right? I, I feel that um, health, you know, your health is honestly the most important thing that you have, right? People think money is or you have a big house, a big car. If you're sick and you're in the hospital, it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter, you know, how nice your car is, you know, you can't enjoy those things. Like, you know, somebody I used to look up to, I still do, is, you know, Steve Jobs. And one of the biggest things when he got sick was like, you know, money can't buy health, period. So, you know, I, I try my best to, you know, take walks, run, work out, you know. Plus, you know, when you when you build nicely, your suits fit real nice, right? <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Facts. Now, Clifford, did you have an athletic background as far as your high school days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually, I'm happy you brought that up because um, when, when I was, um, you know, like elementary, junior high school, high school, basketball was my thing. I played ball. 
um, I looked up to Kobe Bryant. That was like my, 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 he was, you know, Kobe was like my guy. Like I watched him from high school into the NBA. I loved how, you know, cocky and, you know, so driven and so, you know, the arrogance. I love people don't like arrogance, but I feel like without arrogance, you can't achieve anything you want, right? Super I'm not saying be arrogant. Exactly. I'm not saying be arrogant to the point where you're making other people feel bad. It's about being arrogant in yourself. Like when somebody says, no, you can't, the arrogance would be like, no, I, I actually, I can Right. So I used to play ball. Um, but, you know, I, I stopped growing. Right. Uh, I remember in junior high and in, in elementary school, I was like the best player. You know, I played point guard Then I went to high school and I tried out and, you know, I played point guard and these point guards are like six foot. <laughs> Especially in New York. <laughs> oh my, bro! Like I remember tryout, and you know, I still, I still tried out. You know, I could have looked at them, and I still went for it. You know, I didn't make the team, and when I didn't make the team in high school, I honestly just stopped. Right? You know, some honestly, when you think back, I could have pursued it, cause, and you know, worked hard at it. But I was just like, you know what? I'm alright. I used to play ball, and I ran track in high school. Played football. That was a mistake. Um, but. Yeah, I, I I used to I used to I used to I used to play a lot of sports actually. That was my thing. And, you know, the parents weren't having it because what do you mean you're playing? You going to school to play? You know, <laughs> you know so for the Ghanaian American, young Ghanaian American listeners now, with, with my parents, it's almost like I had to negotiate with them the sports I could play. Like at first, it was football because I was just really fast. I could jump high. So uh, Detroit, we got a, a, a PAL or PAL. Police Athletic League, yes, and I was recruited to go play football. And my mom, you know, wow. she, she put her hands on her head. She was like, "Hey, Kofi, my son, he'll break every bone in your body." You know, I'm like, I'm like, mom, it's not like that. You know, she wasn't having it. So basketball was kind of like um, I negotiated my way to basketball, track and field. You know, but, you know, my dad only cared about what my report card looked like. He didn't care about yep. how many points I have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of us, I'm telling you, it's the same story for all of us. Um, I, I remember one time I went for a track meet, right? Um, and, I, you know, African parents, I think, I, you know, our, our parents, like the, 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 that generation who came yeah, here. The older generation. Really, yeah. They really didn't know you know, the school life here and all of that stuff. Like, we're different. When we, you know, have kids and all that would be different. But yeah. I remember I went to a track meet, and track meets take a long time. Like, you might have the first relay, but you still have to wait mm -hmm. for everything to be done. So I remember I won one of my relays, and I was excited to go home. You know, I had this medal. You know, I came in first with, you know, four by 400. I go home, open the door, and the first thing is my dad is like, so where were you? <laughs> you told us you are going to track in the morning. Now at night you are coming, bro. To this day, I never showed him the. I was so like, you know, like, you know, like when you're proud to show something, mm -hmm. like they took out the whole excitement from me because of like. So after that, I just even track. I stopped really, you know, wanting to do anything because it's like, you know, you go, you work hard, and it's like they're not really supporting it. So I, I just, I just made a commitment to myself. When I have kids, man, I'm gonna support anything they do. Uh, make sure that you know I'm there. You know whatever it is so you know but i get it they they there's not something they were supposed to so we can't really right add. their generation was different yeah. yeah that's true now for me i'm about to be 39 so like in my my era growing up in detroit um i didn't see that many african ball players other than like manu bowl akima lajo and the mutomo so when i first seen a Ghanaian make the nba uh, Pops uh, Mensa Boso, I believe. He was yeah. uh, from out of George Washington University. Yeah. And a real athletic dude. He about he was like 6'9". I had which never is, seen listen, a which is unheard. Six, nine. Thank you. Unheard of. <laughs> unheard of, bro. We are vertically challenged. So that, right. that he, he was like the it. Yeah. <laughs> athletic, dunking on people, you know, dunking on people, you know. So uh, a couple years ago, uh, another Ghanaian uh, made the NBA. He was actually born in Ghana and moved to uh, the States to play college ball at Providence. Uh, his name is Ben, I want to say, uh, Frenzo or, or Frenzo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, he about, he's about 6'8", man. So that's, that's another tall, you know, Ghanaian. So I was really excited. He was in the NBA, like, briefly with the, uh, with the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Yeah. So now the people also want to know, 
if it wasn't for entertainment, what else did you have as far as uh, career aspirations? Man, I, I don't, you know, so I, I don't know. Like, there's this famous thing about that, that, you know, Eddie Murphy's one of my idols too. He had one of those things where it's like, you know, you have plan A, never have a plan B, right? Because for you to have a plan B, that means you you have a feeling that plan A might not work, right? Wow. So, you know, I, I did the whole school thing because I'm 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 Ghanaian. There is no I'm not going Actually. to college. So I went to college, you know, I did a business management with concentration in human resources, right? So that's what I had my degree in. So I was like, you know, things don't work, you know, I can always sit behind a desk and, you know, um, you know, to check emails and I guess fire people all day, which was cool. I, I actually enjoyed HR because there's a lot of power there. So, you know, that's that's what I went to school for. But the entertainment is what the passion is. Like, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if you know, like you personally, if you have a certain skill, right, or something like you do, like for example, like this podcast you do. If that's what your passion is, don't you feel like you're invisible sometimes? Like you feel like you're like Superman. Like when I'm on stage and you put a mic in my hand. You know, I feel like I can, like, I, I don't know. And I used to say this, like, you can have a bunch of the most popular people. Obama could be there, you know, Oprah. Like, if you put a mic in my hand, I have I have this thing in my head where all of them will be like, nah, this, this kid right here, he's special. Because it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's something. It's a God-given gift. Yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, I've, I've never trained for it. I remember the first time I, I did a performance, I just went on stage, and you you think God was just working through me. I never performed but like after the night everybody's looking at me like you know you host a lot i was like no nah, this is actually my first time so wow. yeah yeah it, it's 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 crazy so i guess thank god that everything worked out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now what is what is your favorite Ghanaian food I'm, I'm, I'm really curious oh that's that's simple man so it's a mutual and katukwain so you know rice gun nice. okay rice gun you know a mutual and oh man you know if i could have that every day I, I would eat that every day, man. I, I love rice in general, but just the mutual and the peanut butter soup. Beautiful bro. combo. Woo! What is yours? Mine is probably jollof rice. So, see, my, my wife is Russian, so she does. She rarely cooks, like, Ghanaian food. She knows how to cook a little bit. So when I do get Ghanaian food, I'm always, like, looking forward to, like, Jalov, Kilawele, the fried plantains. Ooh, yeah. Extra spicy, though. Yeah. Um, Kilawele, that's mom, what it's you know, that's... My mom would cook some. she would cook up something like really, really super traditional. Nice. Those are good. Those are, you know, jalof is, you know, that's, jalof is jalof, right? Jalof is, um, you know, us Ghanaians, as you know, we, we do make the best jalof. So we stand by it. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm glad you said we stand by it because uh, a few years back, uh, we had some uh, Gambian friends. And according to them, the history of jollof rice extends beyond Ghana and Nigeria. It does. It actually goes back to like uh, like the north, like more towards like Mali, uh, a little bit more out to the west, like Gambia and Senegal. I really didn't it's know true. they were making jollof rice. It, it, it's true. The, um you know, and, and that's why, like, when, when you're battling between who makes the best jollof, right? I, if, a, if somebody from Senegal or Gambia says something, I leave it back. I'm like, you guys, they, uh -huh. technically, they created jollof. Right. So, you know, you can't really fight with somebody who created something, right? The originator, however, right. Yeah, however, and I, I stand by this, they created it, but when it made its way to the West, Ghanaians just perfected it. Facts. Because their jollof is different. When they, you know, they call it jollof, but I had, and it's very good. Senegal jollof is very good. But it's not how ours looks or tastes. Right. So, but yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. It, it, that's, I had to, you know, go back because I remember some Senegal one time was like, you know, you Nigerians and Ghanaians are arguing, but you guys didn't create jollof. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know how we are pride. <laughs> what are you talking about? Reading, I'm like, oh, shoot. So, yeah. So they're right. They're right. Yeah, I'll... I'll I'll let them live on that one since they started it. Now, growing up as a Ghanaian in, in Detroit, it was really, really rough in the 80s. Um, it's interesting you brought up Eddie Murphy earlier. His movie, Coming to America, 
<laughs> I was still dealing with like, you know, dealing with like some of like the images from the movie when I was younger. You know, I had to kind of like, you know, kind of try extra hard to like let people know that like, you know, Africans, we come in, in, in from different walks of life. We got all kind of things, you know, going on for us, whether it's the way we treat women in our relationships, um, you know, the way we dress, the way we handle ourselves. Did you go through any type of harsh prejudice growing up in a big city also uh, out, in, out in New York? Yeah, of course. So, you know, let me touch on Coming to America, right? Because that's legit my favorite movie of all time. Oh, love really? My favorite movie. So Coming to America did two things for us as Africans, right? Um, what, what it did for us positively, you know, let's talk about the negative. The negative, of course, is, you know, they show some visuals where, you know, they're walking outside and there's lions, you know, walking <laughs> around, you know, okay, you know, the, the whole blazer with the, the head of the, you know, I get it. <laughs> However, you got to understand what the positive side is, right? And the genius, you know, that Eddie Murphy, even though he's not somebody that's really from Africa, is he made people here realize that Africa is a very rich place, right? Remember, he was a king, right? True. That's a good yeah, you understand that? He, he, didn't, he, didn't make, yeah, he didn't make it seem like he was like a poor person. So people, like, he made it, like... The ceremony alone in the beginning showed culture, like it showed the dancing, it showed you know African clothes, it showed extra that we were regal, real, real regal. Yeah, it showed royalty. It showed even though when he came here, remember, remember he came to America and he had to downgrade to fit in. Remember, an African downgraded in America to fit in with American culture, right? So you got to look at like the positive. So even though like coming to America, you know, there's certain parts you can be like, man, come on, Eddie, you went too far. He showed royalty, right? He didn't, he didn't portray us the way that most people portray. That's why I love the movie so much. But let's come back to growing up African, because that's where my whole comedy is. Like, when I do my stand-up, that's what I talk about. When I, when I came here, yes, got picked on, you know, because of my last name, Owusu, right? They used oh, to make fun of that. Um, you know, the accent. Um, they used to call me African, what is it, booty scratcher. Booty scratcher. Oh, you remember like, that? Oh, man. All of that. But one thing that I learned, right, is... The people who were making fun of me were not the people who I expected to make fun of me. The people who were making fun of me were African Americans, right? So I remember I came home one day and I told my dad, I'm like, Dad, like, you know, I go to school and the people who I'm, I'm thinking I can relate to right. are the ones making fun of me. And, you know, he says something that I still live by. He's like, just because somebody looks like you, right, doesn't mean that they are you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went through that. Um, I remember a lot of Ghanaians back in the day. Now, now the culture is different. Everybody loves African culture. Way African different. Cultures. Back then, most Ghanaians would say that they were Jamaicans. You remember that? You remember that? Yes. Yes. Bro, yes. They were Jamaicans. They were, they were not Africans. Mind you, they had the thickest African accents. Talk about, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not from Africa. Me? <laughs> I'm like, bro, your name is Yao. <laughs> like, so, yeah, yeah, I definitely went through that, man. But I'm happy where the culture is now. Like, everybody, white, black, Chinese. I, I saw a Chinese guy the other day with um, one of those African tops, and I'm like, this is crazy, man. Back in the day, you get, you get. You get ostracized, you get clown. Like, now, Black Panther, you know, Black another Panther, I almost shed a tear when the movie came out, man. <laughs> see, but see, another one, too, how they portrayed Africa, right? Royalty again. Yep. He's a king. Like, I, I, that's what I like. I like certain movies where, you know, sometimes you watch it, like us being African, you watch it, you know it's over the top. You know, the whole ceremony where they're doing all that. You know, <laughs> over the top. But however, they, they make, you know, he's the richest Marvel character. Black yes. Panther is the richest, like, because Vibranium is in Wakanda. Yes. You got to give respect to the people who wrote this. Instead of portraying Africa as this poor place, they made this man the richest, like yep. smart, you know, look, look how the technology, like they're more technology. famous in the whole world. Yeah, so just stuff like that, you know, I, I appreciate when they do that because people, some people are telling our stories so backwards that I get very offended, oh. so, yeah. Man, man, Cliff, Clifford, when I, when I see, you know, fellow Ghanaians, you know, that's, you know, yes, they're successful Ghanaians behind the scenes as well, and I appreciate them too, but for the purpose of, you know, spreading the movement 
towards the masses. I'm always excited to see Ghanaians that's doing big things, you know, on a on on a large scale level. Seeing you with four hundred thousand plus subscribers, seeing you doing your thing, it really makes me, you know, really makes me proud. You know, my 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 kids, as hyper as they are, when when you're on YouTube and I watch you on YouTube, they stop running around and they sit there. <laughs> And watch, and that's rare. Like that's yeah. rare for my hyper ADHD <laughs> kids. Like they stick around and watch, and it really, it really makes me proud, man. Keep going, what you're doing. Uh, stay positive, stay motivated, um, stay blessed. Um, hopefully, my heavy brand podcast can, can continue motivating and inspiring the youth in Detroit and, and beyond Detroit. Uh, thank you for. Uh, Thank you for coming on the show, man. I'm going to keep course, man. following and supporting your movement, bro. It's a pleasure, man. I, I really, really do appreciate it. You, know, you, you, you have no idea how, how meaningful it is, you know, everything that you're seeing right now. Because, you know, and I always say this, and people don't realize the power behind it, but, you know, we all start from zero, right? Everybody, from, from the, the biggest um, people in the world, like the um, Obamas and the Oprahs, the, the Puff Daddies, the Kevin Hart's, everybody starts from zero, being nobody, right? So, you know, um, when you get to a point where people appreciate what you did, because I, I know the struggle that it took for me to get here, right? Nobody knows the struggle. And I tell people all the time, this is something I want to leave with any, you know, young person, old person, no matter what stage you are in your life, right? You always have to remember that the mistake that a lot of people make, and I make sure I don't make that mistake, is if you ever go on my YouTube, my Instagram, anything, you're never going to see you know, how, how big my house is, how many cars I have. I like to show people the struggle. Like, if I'm editing a video at 4 a.m., that's what I post. Because I want people to realize that, listen, that, you know, before I got to 400K, there's a grind behind it, right? The mistake a lot of people do is as soon as they become successful, all they show you is the success. Yes. Now, kids sit back and just say, I want to be, see, the kids just say, I want to be successful. But then I really tell you to get to where I got to, this is what I did, right? So, like, I really appreciate, you know, you know, you telling me this stuff, because I remember when I used to post a video, nobody was watching. I was sit, I was sit there for like a week, just waiting. Wow. Like, and mind you, I go to church, and I'm telling people watching, they're telling me, oh, I'm watching, I'm watching, but I'm like, if you're watching. Where the views at? Yeah, it still says two. 20 of you guys just told me you're watching, so why does it still say two? Uh -huh. So I appreciate that, man. It means a lot. And I know you're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The name yeah. already says it, heavy. You're going to get very heavy, bro. Hey, amen. Okay. Amen. It's going to get heavy, and I, 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 I appreciate this, man. I'm, and I know we're going to do this again. When You're, you're going to be on a bigger platform, and we're going to yeah. look back at this interview and be like, man, look, man, look at this. So thank amen. you, man. Amen to that, man. Um, Heavy Brand Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, that's Facebook, my Facebook page, at IG Reality TV. Every Saturday, we will air the episodes at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Clifford Owusu, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Clifford. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, man. Hello. All right, man. Have a good one.